I am Rolf Klesen and my guest today is Jordi Guell. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So you are very important here at the Singapore 2023 INT annual meeting where we are meeting mm -hmm. at the moment uh, because you are not only um, on the trademark reporter, um, the INT trademark reporter, but you also gave a talk uh, about the most recent EU case law. Um, so tell me what are the most important EU cases that shape the EU trademark world? Yes, well, this uh, talk that we give is a summary of the annual uh, review of uh, European case law that is published annually. This has 59 cases this year, and in uh, in this session, we summarize the most important ones. Mm? Right. And we divide them in topics. So, uh, for example, in distinctiveness, uh, we talked about um, very interesting the Louis Vuitton Damier Azur, this mm -hmm. uh, uh, pattern trademark that uh, finally was rejected by the uh, by the general court mm -hmm. in an invalidity action uh, because uh, Louis Vuitton could not prove uh, acquired distinctiveness in all uh, European uh, countries. So there were five um, countries where no distinctiveness, uh, no no persuasive evidence of acquired dis distinctiveness had been filed. So uh, the court said that um, uh, there was a substantial part of the EU missing, so the trademark should be rejected. It, uh, this case was important because, uh, well, it set a little bit the the let's say conditions eh, that you must meet when uh, trying to prove acquired distinctiveness mm -hmm. uh, then we also had uh, cases of bad faith mm -hmm. because after well, maybe the monopoly case yeah, the Monopoly case, but the Monopoly case was not from 2020. Right, right, sorry, it's much but, older. <laughs> but yes, no, in, in mm. fact, the Monopoly case was, uh, is from the, not from 2022, from 2021. Right. And this was a summary mm -hmm. of 2022. Uh, and yes, in bad faith, we, we had a case where, uh, in fact, it was a, a German uh, uh, person that copied a club in Ibiza, Leo. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a case that reached the general court. Mm -hmm. And it was, the trademark was absolutely identical with the same lettering and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, what had, to, but for different goods and services. Okay. So after the cotton decision of the court of justice, the similarity in the goods is not a requirement for bad faith. Okay. So here the thing was to establish whether the fact that the logos were totally identical and the knowledge uh, that the applicant had of the existence of that trademark was sufficient or not to uh, conclude that there was bad faith. Right. And there were different uh, decisions because first the cancellation division said, Bad faith, then the boards of will said no bad faith. So there were uh, contradictory de decisions. And in the end, the general courts concluded that there was bad faith uh, because one element was decisive. And this element, according to the uh, general court, was that the applicant had tried to sell the trademark uh, okay. for a substantial sum. Okay. Uh, and uh, also the, uh, the court said that uh, filing this application uh, in so many classes, it had not been used yet. There was no, let's say, commercial uh, well reason that could explain filing this trademark in so many classes. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was also, uh, uh, let's say, cancelled uh, for bad faith. So Very good. we had some, some interesting cases. There was... Uh, of course, uh, the Louboutin uh, Amazon case was oh, yes, tell me uh, was was uh, mentioned, but it, here the thing is that platforms like Amazon uh, are not liable for uh, infringement mm -hmm. when the, it's just the uh, the goods are offered by a third party if mm -hmm. they take action immediately when they tell them, look, uh, this is infringer, they they take them out 
they have uh, no liability. The thing is that Louboutin uh, sued um, the Amazon. Uh, this was, I think, in in Belgium. Mm-hmm. And one of the arguments they they made was that when uh, Amazon sells the goods or offers the goods, it's sometimes not so clear if it's the same Amazon that is offering the goods Mm -hmm. or it's a third party. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's this, you really don't know. Right. And when you receive the goods home, Mm -hmm. they have the Amazon parcel. Right. So uh, what Amazon does is not exactly like having a platform where third parties sell the goods, Mm -hmm. but mm, they do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Uh, They advertise, and in this advertising, sometimes it's not clear uh, if it's a third party offer or it's an Amazon, then when mm-hmm. you receive it, they also put their logo. And uh, the Court of Justice uh, uh, replied, it was a preliminary ruling from Belgium, and they replied that, uh, well, in these cases where it's not clear enough, when they don't make it sufficiently clear that the offer that appears or this advertisement when you when you search for a uh, Christian Louboutin shoes in right. Amazon when it's not clear enough in the mm-hmm. results you get that the goods are offered by a third party mm-hmm. mm, then uh, Amazon or other uh, uh, similar, marketplaces yes like uh, eBay marketplaces or, or eBay uh, can be liable so okay, wow. now it's very I think after this decision oh. Yeah. Uh, it will be very important for these marketplaces to make it clear if that offer mm-hmm. is from a third party or not. And, and this is also an important decision that that we, we mentioned. Very cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know, we, we revised quite a few cl- cases. There's one from, from Germany, which uh, is a procedural uh, uh, thing, but, but it's interesting. Uh, you know that when you have to file a cancellation action or a revocation action. Mm -hmm. If it's a direct action, you must file it before the EU IPO, eh, for European trademarks, of course. Right. But uh, it's also possible in a counterclaim for trademark infringement Mm -hmm. mm, to counterclaim requesting the invalidity of the mark. So if you're... Mm -hmm. Yes. This is the only uh, case where a court... Mm -hmm can uh, handle, uh, uh, can decide on an invalidity of a European Union trademark. So the thing was, in Germany, it's the Apfel Zugl. I pronounce okay. it very bad, but yeah. it's, 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 it's this case. Uh, it comes from, from the German courts. An infringement action was filed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, a counterclaim for invalidity for lack of distinctiveness, was made in the same legal action. Mm -hmm. But what happened was that the claimant made up his mind and withdrew Uh the main complaint. Okay. So the German courts were not sure whether the counterclaim is dependent on the main action. Ah, yes. And they could continue, uh, uh, let's say, dealing with the case, Mm -hmm. uh, or when after the uh, main action have been withdrawn mm-hmm. they should also consider the counterclaim uh, let's say uh, that they had no jurisdiction inviting the, right. the party to go to the office to the I UIPO. and the court of justice uh, concluded that no that even if the main action is uh, withdrawn the court can still uh, wow. continue deciding on 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 the counterclaim for invalidity mm-hmm. This was also an interesting case. And um, there was, this is a rather complex one on uh, repackaging. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's uh, also, uh, uh, there are several consolidated cases that went up to the the Court of Justice uh, on on repackaging of pharmaceutical goods. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, The false medicines directive Mm -hmm. obliges pharmaceutical products to have a safety seal Mm -hmm. and a barcode Mm -hmm. so that you can identify Mm -hmm. uh, that it has not been manipulated and that it's original with that barcode. But, you know, in Europe, you can 
uh, I mean, it's a unique free market, a free circulation of goods. You can buy a pharmaceutical product in Greece mm -hmm. and sell it in in Germany or right. in Spain. Right. There's only one, uh, let's say, you must comply with health mm -hmm. administrative or rules of mm -hmm. each country. So if yes. you sell this pharmaceutical product in Germany mm -hmm. and the health uh, statements and everything are in Greek. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't understand. Greek, right. Uh, so it's not not possible. You the parallel imports mm -hmm. of this pharmaceutical product mm -hmm. are allowed mm -hmm. to change to mm -hmm. the uh, ah. all this health uh, information mm -hmm. uh, of the product to adapt it mm -hmm. to their local rules. Mm -hmm. But then they have to break the seal. Exactly. Uh, and they have to break the seal. Mm -hmm. So the question is, after the falsified uh, medicines directive mm -hmm. established this obligation, and it's also allowed for parallel imports to uh, adapt this mm -hmm. uh, health uh, statements to their language and local, does that mean that to comply with that directive, uh, parallel imports can always repackage. Mm -hmm. Does does that uh, allow them to always repackage, or mm -hmm. or no? This is what parallel uh, yes. imports has said, and the uh, the pharmaceutical companies the the they want to the, avoid that. They of want course. to avoid that, no? And they said right. no. This is not the only way you have. Mm -hmm. You can still break the seal, put another seal put a sticker, so you can make the box look ugly mm -hmm. and still comply with the rules. Right. And the the Court of Justice had to decide whether uh, repackaging was always allowed or under which conditions, mm -hmm. or, or, or it was only relabeling but not repackaging. And in the end, uh, the Court of Justice, as usual, they say it depends. No? <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, what they said is it depends on the uh, local consumers of each country. Okay. If in that specific country, uh, people are used to buying uh, these sorts of medicines with a sticker on it, with another seal, and they would this would not be a real problem because they would think, well, I don't care, I know that it's a real original product, then uh, the you can oppose repackaging. But mm -hmm. in some countries, consumers are not used to this at all. And this would make almost impossible mm -hmm. to sell this uh, relabeled with the stickers and the new codes. Yes. So in these countries, like I would say Spain, where mm -hmm. we are not used at all to this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, then parallel uh, traders would be allowed to repackage. Mm -hmm. So it really it depends on wow. consumers in each country. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, we had uh, quite a few cases, but these ones are the the ones that that I remember. Have there been uh, some cases? Uh of evergreening trademarks, so repeat trademarks, so the same trademark is filed every four years to avoid the use of trademarks? Well, we have, uh, this is... Was, was that one of the more important cases or so? If, if you say no, then... Uh, no, I mean, it's it's the monopoly case. Right, uh, right, right. And, But uh, then has there been like follow-ups, like uh, clarifying, like what what mm, they mean? No, no, because the this, we mentioned, Cases from, like, say, high courts of national countries, right. and also from the general courts, and right. it has still not. Uh, we will see yes. these cases in the future. Okay, but it, the, the monopoly one is so recent, right? So that that we, there are no other high court cases. We have to see how. Right. How. Okay, let's see. Well, thank you very much for this very interesting interview. Uh, I'm sure it is very, very helpful for all the trademark practitioners that are viewing this video. Yeah, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much.